It's day one of the Clemson! I'm so excited. Finally, the readathon is starting. As I said in my TBR video, it's gonna be an interesting month uh, because I don't have a lot of time. But what I decided to do is that at least with a few books, I will set myself goals and put like to read one chapter a day on my to-do list. So to just make it part of my job, kind of, uh, to just try and force myself to, to take the time for those topics that I think are so important and for the readathon that I made. So um, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. It's day one. And I am already reading this book. Um, this is the German book that I mentioned that's about uh, the animal in extinction and climate change in general. Um, it's written by that guy and that guy. And as you can see, this is only the dust jacket because I am reading the physical book. And look at this cover. This is so nice. Ah, I love this. This is very simple and not my favorite color, but I, I really like the design with the animals. And I'm already a little bit into it. Luckily, it's not, not that, um, big of a book in the sense that it doesn't have like a lot of pages and the font is, is, is pretty big. So I hope to get this done within the first week. That's, that, that's the goal. Like if I can even get this done within the first couple of days, that would be amazing. But yeah, this is my first read. And uh, when it comes to eBooks, I plan to start to read Spying on Whales first because I can double up with this one. And yeah then I would have two prompts completed. Uh, no, three prompts completed if I managed to read both of those books. Besides that, I have seen that a few people have posted TBRs and have posted on Instagram already, which is super exciting, which makes me super, super happy that uh, people are participating because I really thought I would be sitting here alone at the end of the day. Um, so I'm super, super happy about that. Thank you so much to everyone that uh, replied to my emails that I sent out and everyone Everybody who is making any kind of content and who is participating in the readathon. And if you hear something in the background, that's just the guy who's selling fish. He has a very annoying honk that everybody knows he's coming and he's selling fresh fish. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so please don't get irritated by that. Despite that, there is nothing new at the moment. The weather is really bad here uh, today. So perfect weather to work and to read. So I hope I get something done today on both fronts and I will see you with an update soon. Hello again. It is the 9th of September, so over a week since the Climathon has started. I wanted to do a little bit more of regular updates, but the last week has not been the best for me mentally, so I didn't feel like picking up the camera at all or like doing anything relating YouTube in general. It was it was just a, a tough week, you know? Sometimes you have those weeks and um, yeah, but I haven't forgotten about the Climathon, of course. Um, and in fact, I finished a book literally five minutes ago. I read it almost until the end yesterday and then we had some guests coming over so I couldn't read the last 10 pages. I hate when that happens, it frustrates me so much. <laughs> but uh, it was a lovely evening yesterday, so it was worth it. And this morning I finished this. Actually, let me put the, the dust jacket back on. Um, so this book is a German book by those two authors. And the title would translate, can translate into two different words. Uh, either about life or survival. Uh, because in Germany, if you write überleben together, it means survival or surviving. And if you separate it and say über as one word and leben as one word, it's about life. So very nice title cho choice. I really appreciate it. And this book was actually really nice. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think my only critique is that they, as it is a German book, it didn't have like a lot of examples from Germany all the way up until the end. That is the only place where they really talked about stuff in Germany, mostly about politics and stuff. Um, 
And I thought, like, if somebody reads this who is a little bit of a skeptic of the whole situation, they wouldn't read this far, probably. Because they will constantly think, that, like, yeah, it will never affect me because all the effects are just, like, in the rainforest or somewhere. Because they don't really get it, you know? That's that's But that's basically my only critique. And the other critique is that there are, like, not a lot of examples of what we can do. There are a lot of ideas in here. But there are no real call to actions, really. So you leave the book, like, educated, hopeful, aware, but not really with any, like, concrete plan what your next steps are going to be. But maybe that's just not what the book was meant to do, and that's that's fine as well. Uh, I really liked the book. I really enjoyed it, and I would definitely recommend it to my German friends. I'm also halfway through an audiobook that I'm listening to. It's called Sanak and it's about indigenous people and it's interesting. I just can very clearly tell that I am not the audience this is written for, which is completely fine. Not all stories need to be written for for a white person, you know, like but it it's clearly written for other people. <laughs> But I still enjoy it. Like, it's just that a lot of the concepts and a lot of the things that are discussed don't really resonate with me or I don't know what exactly they mean. And it's not like crazy entertaining for me because I'm used to a very different kind of writing style and a different kind of storytelling, really. And that's completely fine. It's always super interesting to see like all those different kinds of yeah, writing styles and ways to tell a story and why people tell a story. And I'm I'm learning more about storytelling than about indigenous people with this, I feel like. Um, even though, of course, it's also educational on that. And I'm reading that for the indigenous prompt. Ah, yeah, I, I should have said uh, this is either just nonfiction. Uh, I thought it would be way more about animals than it was. I think I could still count it towards animals if I don't read anything else regarding animals, but uh, I might just have this on one fiction. Anyway, back to the indigenous prompt. Um, I really wanted to read Braiding Sweetgrass because this is a book I've been looking forward to for, for years and I never got around to purchasing it. And then in June, I ordered it. In June. And I said when I ordered it, quote, I will order this in June already so it will arrive in time for my birthday. My birthday was on the 2nd of August <laughs> and the book did not arrive <laughs> because I live on the Azores Archipelago. So delivery takes a while sometimes and I talk with the people from the bookshop because I had a feeling they just forgot to order it, which also is something that happens here quite a lot. Um, they said no, they ordered it for sure and uh, well... It never arrived uh, until a few days ago, I think like two days ago, I got a message that my book arrived and I finally have braiding sweet grass. I'm so happy it just took three months to arrive here. Wow. Um, next time I'm just gonna order a bunch of books together so <laughs> I don't have to wait that long. But um, the only thing is now that I open it and I read a few lines in between, I sometimes do that, just like, you know, flip, flip through and just read a few sentences here and there to, to get a feeling of how the book is going to be. Um, but it's like very small font and very dense and almost 400 pages. And I really want to devour this book. I really want to take my time with it. So I think I will just read Sanak for the indigenous prompt and leave this out of the climathon for now. I might start it because I'm just so excited for this book, but I'm 100% sure that I will not finish this book during the readathon because I really want to take my time with this one. What I'm going to read next is Spying on Whales. Uh, I'm reading this as an ebook. I already started it and I'm excited to dive deeper into it. I'm only like 5% in or something and I want this book to be one of the priority books during this month. During this month. So I really hope I can finish it in the next couple of weeks. And when it comes to physical books, I'm debating to read one of these two books. Those are both German books. Um, but yeah. Both of those are options for me. I'm not exactly sure which one it will be yet. But uh, yeah, let's see. Spying on Wales definitely has the priority for now and it's gonna be my main book and to finish the audiobook of Sanak, of course. I 
Hello again. It is Monday the 13th of September and I have some Climathon updates. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, I, I'm i always confused because I'm also filming my island garden living vlogs uh, at the same time as I'm filming this, so I'm always like, what am I recording? <laughs> First of all, I watched the documentary A Plastic Ocean and I can just highly recommend this documentary. I watched it now like on the weekend, I think on Saturday if I'm not mistaken and it was very impactful. I really, really liked it. I liked that it was talking a lot about how this kind of stuff affects islands, specifically as I'm living on a small island. Um, it doesn't focus on Azores at all. Azores are like not even mentioned. They don't exist in that documentary as per usual for mainstream media, but um, it is like very impactful in the way the images are chosen and the way they talk about it. I think it was lacking to some degrees on a few things. I think it could have gone, ooh, ow. <laughs> I just hit my elbow. <laughs> I think it could have gone more into depth about like solutions regarding plastic, because again, it was like, oh, you're the customer, you just need to stop buying plastic and I find that so problematic sometimes because it like guilt trips you for every item that you buy um and of course it's it's super important that we buy less plastic and that we choose less plastic and like because also that is the only language that the companies will understand is, is numbers and sales so if we prefer something without plastic over something in plastic and a lot of people do that, they will see that in their numbers and they will hopefully at some point realize what's going on and change it. But I think it, it, mm, it's it's just not the solution for everything, you know? It's a it's a lot of it's it's a lot more complex than that. And I was missing a little bit that. I also was hoping they would show some of the solutions that young innovative people have been working on. Like I know there is like a young guy who invented something that is collecting plastic from the ocean. I know some some young woman found like an, an enzyme, I think. Oh, I need to look it up. Uh, I'm sorry, I will put something on the screen. I, I have to look it up again. I, I have a horrible memory, so um, just, just uh, here's some information. I would like to see more discussions about how we can use that and how we can implement these things and how we can pressure companies into making less plastic or how do islands, for example, deal with garbage? Because to not have plastic is at all is simply not the solution anymore. That's not practicable. Nobody will ever do that. <laughs> um, like nowadays, plastic is in our everyday life in everything that, that we do. This camera has plastic elements. Our phone has plastic elements, everything. Everything has plastic nowadays. And you can't just say, okay, like just because I live on an island, I cannot use plastic at all anymore. Like it's it's just not practicable. Anyway, still A Plastic Ocean is a massive recommendation, it was a really good documentary. I'm actually thinking about making like a viewing party here on the island. I have to talk with some people and invite some people because I think this would be a very interesting documentary for the local people here. But no matter where you are in the world, if you are interested in the topics of ocean and environmentalism, then please give this documentary your time. I think it's worth it. Speaking of ocean, when it comes to reading, I don't have a lot of updates, unfortunately. I know this should be my focus this month, but it just it's just not uh, happening the way I would like. Um, I am My main book right now is still Spying on Whales, uh, but I'm only 15% in because it's a very slow read and so far I'm not really feeling it, which is uh, not what I was hoping for because I've been looking forward to this book for so long, ever since I, I first heard of its existence. I've been so excited to read this book. Um, and it's interesting, it truly is. It's just that it's very slow and I'm like, uh, I don't know, why Why can you not like tell us the facts a little bit more engaging and with a bit more storytelling? 
So I don't know. That's just my personal personal preference, I guess. But I've been thinking of pausing that book and picking up another book just so I get more done. But then again, that's kind of not the point of learning about climate change. Sometimes you need to take yourself. Sometimes you need to take the time and get uncomfortable and sit with things for a while to truly unlearn and learn. So I'm not really sure what to do. I'm not like highly motivated to pick the book up, which is bad. So yeah, maybe maybe I will pick up another book just, just for now to see what happens. And then maybe I come back to Spying on Wales because I really want to love this book. <laughs> And lastly, the final update that I have for you today is that I'm going to participate in two online events that I'm very excited for. I know that you will not um, see this in time to participate yourself, but maybe you are interested to check out those sites and maybe get involved in the next event. And the first event is this Wednesday from Indigenous Climate Action or Indigenous Climate Network, and they are doing a webinar uh, let me see the title. Uh, the short title is Decolonizing Climate Policies Number 2, <laughs> but it had a longer title. Let me see. Climate Impacts and Indigenous-Led Solutions. This is just a webinar. I'm super excited to listen to those people and what they have to say. That's this Wednesday. And on the next day, on Thursday, uh, there is the members meeting of the International Workgroup for Indigenous Affairs. Uh, I'm a member, I'm donating to them. Uh, if you know anything about these organizations, because I know organizations can be problematic as well. If you know anything, please let me know down below. But so far, from what I know, they seem like good organizations. And uh, I'm excited for those online events. Uh, if you want to check them out, maybe you can participate in the next one too. And I think it's just perfectly fitting for Climathon. There was a truck. <laughs> Good morning. It is the 15th of September and therefore the halftime of the Climathon. And I'm here to give you one last update before the vlog comes to an end. I am currently in the middle of the detox week. So one of the bonus challenges for the readathon. Uh, it is Wednesday, so I'm almost halfway through. I have decided to go with the challenge that I um, said in my TBR video to go one week without imported foods um, because we live here on tiny islands so um, I decided to go um, without anything that is imported either from the mainland Portugal or anywhere else and it's actually harder than I thought it would be. I thought it would be super easy but it turns out it's not as easy as I thought like the list of things that we need to buy once this week is over is getting longer with every day and like it's not crazy it's just a few things but still um, for example i figured out that breakfast for me turns out to be kind of hard because bread we sometimes bake ourselves and is also locally produced here and flour is also um, locally produced here cheese is also locally produced but a lot of other things that I like for breakfast are not locally produced here. But to be honest, that's a very good thing. Like, then it is A, challenging, because it was supposed to be a challenge. I just tried to do the easy way out. And B, that it shows me where I can still improve breakfast, apparently. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good challenge. Um, I also said in my last vlog that I am not really feeling the book uh, Spying on Wales at the moment, unfortunately. I still want to finish it, but for now, for the sake of this readathon, I've decided to go with this book instead, which is by Peter Wohleben, and it is The Secret Network of Nature. I think that's also the uh, English title, and somebody is coming on the street, and I have to hide. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the end of the Climathon vlog portion of this whole thing. I'm not very good at reading vlogs. I feel like I have like no scenic shots of me reading or almost none. And like I don't really show you around because I just forget about it <laughs> all the time. And because I live with my partner who is not interested in YouTube or any of these kind of things. So um I don't feel like my vlogs are super interesting, but I hope you still enjoyed watching it. <laughs> and I will still do a wrap up at the beginning of next month where I will talk about what I yeah have done 
reading wise and what I thought of the whole readathon and if I do it again. If you made any kind of vlog or wrap up or video about the climbathon, please leave it linked down below. Now I'm gonna go because everybody's staring at me. <laughs> and I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope you enjoy the climbathon. I definitely am having a blast. I love this. I'm so happy I did this. So I wish you all a fantastic day and see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, one last thing. I need to clarify something. <laughs> Because I just shared on Instagram that, uh, yeah, how Climathon is going for me and that it's the halfway point and everything. And a friend of mine messaged me and she said that she was that she was sad because she couldn't participate in Climathon because it was too big of a commitment. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I think I think there was a big misconception. And I just want to clarify that here, too, in case anybody else felt that way. The challenges are not obligatory at all. They are prompts and ideas that I give you in case you were not really sure what to pick up during Climathon or in case you want to challenge yourself. I know readathons can be very complex and everything. So I tried my hardest to make it as accessible as possible. That is why I also said you don't necessarily need to read nonfiction only, even though that is, of course, the most educational thing that you can read, but you don't have to if, for example, your mental health doesn't allow you to read nonfiction book about a climate disaster right now, you know? I completely understand that. And I myself am not that fast of a reader anymore that I would be able to fulfill all of the challenges myself. That is why I completely understand when somebody else is like, yeah, I will absolutely not be able to read a book for every challenge or to even read like two books that would fulfill the challenges, you know, like that that's completely fine. Like the challenges are just there for you to give you ideas and to challenge you if you want to be challenged. They are not obligatory. If you have only read like one chapter in one book, that like fits the bill with any of the challenges, you have participated in the Climathon and that's so amazing and you can be so proud of yourself and I'm so happy you participated. So I just wanted to clarify that <laughs> because I don't want this to be a misconception because I really tried my hardest to make the this whole readathon as accessible as possible for everyone because climate change is something that we all need to deal with and that we all need to work on that we all need to educate ourselves but everybody has their own limits um when it comes to time when it comes to energy mental health all these factors play a massive role and that's why i said okay i will try and make it as accessible as possible but apparently i didn't really communicate that very well and i'm sorry if people misunderstood that so i hope now this is clarified and now i'm really going <laughs> goodbye <laughs>